I think we're all really aware from watching the news of how devastating the conflict is and how, I don't know, I feel like every day you hear more that just makes it feel more and more difficult to comprehend or try to engage with. Um, but I think, as usual, from our point of view, one of the really encouraging parts of the story, as Lucy mentioned, is that this is the response of the local church. Um, and we've, as Lucy said, we've been in touch with several different organisations and groups of churches from within Ukraine and around the region. It's just so encouraging to, heartbreaking, but encouraging to hear about churches coming together and being such a really strong response for children. And it's brilliant, Ursi, to have you here um, from Slovakia, which is, yeah, one of those countries that's really responding like that um, and churches coming together to make a difference for families and for children. Um, so while it's just, yeah, heartbreaking to hear about, it's also encouraging to know that in such difficult circumstances, the church is being who the church should be and really um, trying to respond for families and children. Um, so I think it would be great for us to pray a bit just for children in the situation. Um, you know, children will be facing physical dangers where maybe they're trapped in an area or where there are unexploded weapons there. Um, there's the mental health and psychosocial distress from what they will have seen, from living in danger, from being separated from families, from what they might have seen, um, from maybe not knowing what's happened to people they've left behind or finding themselves suddenly in a new place um, and just generally disrupting their sense of um, safety. Um, and yeah, the risk of children being separated from families or on their own, um, which can happen on the journey or maybe where children are sent ahead. And there's a key risk of trafficking. So where someone might say there are good opportunities somewhere else, if you just go along with them. Um, and that's one of the biggest risks people are identifying. Um, yeah, for women and children, actually. Um, and as usual, there's a risk of abuse um, when there's extra pressure and extra stress, and also when there's these disrupted living environments. So living, you know, strangers taking in people, which is really most of the time just a really kind thing to do, but also isn't always very well vetted, um, and shelters as well. Um, so there are really big risks that would be great to just pray into for God to be present in those situations and protecting children, I think. Um, in terms of what Viva's doing, Although we do have some connections from the past, like Ursi and Slovakia, um, we don't have currently active partner networks that we're partnering with there at the moment. Um, so when it started, I wasn't really sure if this was something Viva would be engaged with at all, because it's tempting to want to always be involved in things and do what you can, but there are already lots of people acting. So I didn't want to just jump in and try and do something if we don't actually have something to offer. It's not really our place. Um, but gradually we were in touch with people and people were getting in touch with us um, and we've been part of several kind of key calls with different networks and groups of Christian organizations where we've been able to share some expertise and just hear about what other people are doing and share resources. Um, we produced some basic safeguarding guidelines to help people who are just especially churches who are just suddenly in the situation just some key good practices they could follow that would help to keep children safe We've been trying to gather different resources to share on our Children in Emergencies website to help people access good practice easily. And in there's lots of stuff in the right languages as well being produced, which is really helpful. Um, and it's still really emerging what our actual response might be. So I'd really value your prayers on that. Um, there's an anti-trafficking network in Europe, which works with hundreds of churches who are really um, brilliant on anti-trafficking and sharing that message with churches but are interested in having more of a child focus so there's a chance that we might work with them and maybe do an initial webinar with them to share just some key things people should think about for safeguarding children and see where that develops um, there's an organization which supports christian leaders in ukraine and around other parts of europe that um, want support in knowing how they can equip local people to provide support in trauma um, and thinking maybe we could help equip people in that situation. Um, and all along, I've been wondering if our phone mentoring program from COVID might have something to offer here, because it's such a key way of um, taking good practice messages 
and translating that into a conversation between a supportive mentor or friend and the family themselves. So rather than just giving out information, you really build that relationship and offer support. And that's what so many churches are trying to do, but don't always have the right tools to know what to say or how to do it or a framework for that. Um, and it looks like there is possibly a chance we might be able to develop the COVID phone mentoring into like a version 2.0 that would be not necessarily on the phone, but just probably again, six mentoring sessions based on there's a new set of parenting tips from the same people that have come out to do with how to support children and parents in conflict settings. So we'd quickly develop um, these new sets of conversation guides and we might be able to pilot that with that organization I was talking about that are working with the Christian, the churches around Europe. So that might happen. And one of the key partners we worked with on kind of sharing about the phone mentoring program was really, who really loved that program, or might have a chance to get funding for us to develop that and also to pilot it with different places. Um, so all of that is not, nothing of that is totally confirmed yet, but it all feels like God's doing something and there is something that we do have to offer in that space that's quite unique around bringing churches together and helping to connect churches that are really wanting to do something to help with some really good quality um, messages and resources because um, that's kind of what we have experienced doing and it reminds me a lot of um, the situation I found in Lebanon when I first was there um, and just seeing churches receiving refugees and wanting to do what they can but not really knowing how to do that and not necessarily having good safeguarding stuff in place um, yeah so yeah, there's a sense that I think God really is at work in the midst of such an awful situation. Um, and yeah, it will just be, yeah, great to pray into that and what he's doing in the midst. And yeah, so my yeah prayer points really would be for children, um, for their safety and protection, especially from abuse and trafficking and for psychosocial support. Um, and for the churches within Ukraine and the countries around that they would have everything they need um, to offer support to people that they're receiving, um, whether that's to do with Viva or not, just that there would be sustaining and support for them. And for us, that we'd know how to respond, work with the right partners, um, and just be able to invest time in the things that are really where it would be best for us to have input. So thanks for praying. <laughs>